what should be the foundation that aspiring professional players should build on? Two things that you can do. One, surround yourself, find a community of people who see the world how you see the world, but also want what you want. I think that that's very powerful. And then, and then the second thing I would say is to just surround yourself by positivity. Focus on what you're putting in your ears, whether it's listening to more positive like podcasts or um, watching a streamer. How am I going to look back on my life and say, yeah, I did what I want. Like I did what made me happy or I was a good person or whatever that end goal is for you. And then work backwards from there. My name is Aplox and I'm a professional Valorant coach. This series of podcasts is aimed at bringing knowledge to aspiring professional players in the Valorant scene and the wider esports scene. We talk to professional coaches, professional players, performance coaches, people that work in organisations to bring you the value that you need to become a professional player. Today, we're talking with Team Liquid's senior performance coach, Seventeen. Seventeen used to be a professional PUBG player and has now transitioned into a performance coaching role which he's been doing for several years now under the Team Liquid banner. He has so much value to bring you in terms of how to take yourself to the highest level in terms of human performance, some of the most common issues he's seen and some of the pitfalls that younger players are making. This is really one that you cannot miss if you want to maximise your performance and really bring yourself on a level with some of the highest performing players in the world. Another one you absolutely must watch. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I guess the, the, the guess a really easy place to, to start is kind of define what your role is uh, at a Liquid. How would yeah, you define so, your role? Yeah. Um, by title, my role is I'm the senior performance coach at Team Liquid. Um, what that means exactly is I help teams with everything from, uh, you know, doing mental work in one-on-ones or team environment bonding, uh, uh, kind of setting the culture of a team to more specific things that uh, each individual player might be working on. Uh, things like health and nutrition, hydration, proper sleep, um, just making sure we're ready to perform at the highest level. So, uh, you know, we travel quite a bit and how to avoid cold and flu, um, how to be at your best and be prepared when it comes to jet lag. Um, these are all things that fall under my category uh, of helping a team perform. Now, with that, uh, every team is kind of different. When I come in to, to work with a specific team, um, they all have different needs, right? Or they're all at different parts of their journey, and they have kind of uh, different... Uh, they're each a different part, uh, different ingredients to a recipe, right? So um, you wouldn't try and, you know, make spaghetti when you don't have pasta, right? And I think a lot of teams or a lot of coaches try and do that. Uh, but I try and come in, have an observation period with a team, uh, learn really in depth about them and what is holding them back as well as what's their strengths and what we really need to lean into and then uh, help them perform. So that is my job within Team Liquid. Awesome. To you, what does performance mean beyond just achieving kind of results? Yeah, I think performance is is a lot of things in one. Um, you know, I think we try and we try and make things easy for our brain to comprehend, or we mm -hmm. we really put um, one a label on something. Yeah, uh, but I think that performance in general means something different to everyone. So. Uh, I kind of look at it as like a slider in a video game. So if you're playing, um, you know, Madden or FIFA or something, each player has a certain amount of talent in each place. Um, you need to find that right balance uh, and and know what your goal is with the team and what you're what you're trying to get out of them. So when defining performance for one team, it could be um, just improving every day. Right, uh, it could mm -hmm. just be getting better than where we started the year on. Um, other teams have higher expectations, and and you know that they're more championship ready. And and with teams like that, results tend to be what performance leans into a little bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, winning championships and and things like that aren't worth much if you're not making the people better. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I I look at it as an opportunity. Uh, you know, a little bit about my background. I was a professional player as well. 
uh, someone who didn't really have coaching or mentorship uh, when I was in that, uh, you know, part of my career. And when I kind of retired and got out of playing, that was something that was became more important to me was giving back and showing uh, the youth and the players like, hey, here are, the, here are the mistakes that I made. And a lot of people like to say, you know, hey, here are the mistakes that I made. Don't make them yourself. I'm more of like, hey, here are the mistakes I made. If you want to make them yourself, go for it. Sometimes you can only learn through, you know, making the mistakes yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of why I really care about performance to me. It can't just be results. It's also, am I giving these players something that they can take away for the rest of their lives, you know, to embedder, mm. embedder them. Uh, and I, I say that, but at the, there's times too where if I know that the team is all good people uh, and we really need to lean into winning and then some of those, the, some of those things about like, you know, um, are you happy can be put on hold for a certain amount of time. That's just the honesty. And, and uh, it really comes back to this balancing act of, mm. yeah, you can put happiness on hold for a week for two weeks or whatever, right? Like, because it's crunch time of a season and, and we don't have time to go on to th those things. But um, I hate when I hate when there's like a, you know, a blanket answer that really covers everything because that's just not the reality of it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're gonna have to sacrifice, you're gonna have to play through struggling mentally um, and, and just to show yourself that you can, right? And it, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things where it depends and it shifts with each team and each player. But I think like, as a general rule of thumb, uh, becoming better people and always becoming better at what you're doing uh, in in game and, and as a as a player is something that uh, you know kind of sums up performance. Hmm. I think to to me the yeah because it, it's a bit of an ambiguous term, right? I mean, you know, we kind of we talk about it a lot, especially now it's become a, a bigger and bigger thing in esports. I right. think I think to me it's kind of come to mean risk management, right? It's about minimizing the risk of the people component of the game, which is obviously a really, really big part of the game. I guess right. how important would you would you say it is when it comes to, to getting results compared to how, how, where, where would you kind of see the balance between, you know, knowing what you've got to do in the game and kind of human performance as, as a kind of whole whole component? How would you say yeah. where that balance lies? Yeah, um, I think so that that's something that we're all trying to figure out right mm. and i don't think there's a, a great um you know perfect answer but i will give you a little bit of insight into how i became a performance coach which i think could could kind of answer the question as well uh when i retired as a player uh in PUBG, I, I had a halo career before um and and then i moved into more like coaching and managing voluntarily um and then PUBG came out and naturally it just kind of felt fit my skill set and um I was getting older. I was like 24, 25. And at that time there was a big stigma about, you know, you can't play into your thirties and you can't, you can't play into your twenties, <laughs> yeah. uh, which we now know to, to not be true. But, um, at that time I'd kind of like, Oh, maybe, maybe this isn't going to happen for me. Uh, I was in the military at the time I was in the air force, uh, back in the U S and PUBG came out and it just, it was the perfect storm for me. Uh, and naturally really good at it, climbed the leaderboards and, became one of the the better igls um in PUBG. so then retired as a player went on to coaching i coached our uh, team liquids PUBG team for three years and by the time that my passion for PUBG was fading uh i was looking for what i was going to do next uh, i knew i was going to leave PUBG. i wasn't sure if i was going to stick with tl or what but i kind of came to um the uh, powers that be at team liquid and said hey I'm never someone who's going to half-ass anything. I'm not passionate about this anymore. Do you have something else for me? If not, I'm happy to go find something else. And uh, I was lucky enough and blessed enough that they were like, we love your work and we'd like to see what you can do. Uh, what What do you think you're passionate about now? And this kind of performance thing of, I want to come into different teams and see what makes them tick and just learn from more and more players and more and more teams and help them along the way uh, is how I got kind of into this position. Now, my big questions that I, you know, I wanted answered when I decided to, to make that change was what builds a dynasty, right? What, mm. what makes a team be able to win year over year uh, and, and stick together and not need roster changes versus is it worth it for us as a company or, uh, 
each individual team to really uh, push ourselves to the limits, have results, but then if the team falls apart after that, mm-hmm. is it okay? Or are we into, are we okay with something that I was kind of known for in PUBG, which was always being second? Um, ne- you know, we only won one major event, or it wasn't even that major, but one regional event uh, in my time, three years coaching in PUBG, but we were always second or third. And, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. is that valuable to people? Even through roster changes, in every single roster change we did, no one felt shafted, no one felt hurt, everyone was okay with the changes that we were making. So that was one of the initial questions that was on my mind when I went into mm-hmm. this. And I think, back to your question uh, about performance, that leads into what is the identity that you're going to take on, right? What is Team Liquid's identity? Because uh, above each individual team I work with, there's this umbrella of what Team Liquid stands for and what do mm-hmm. we um, And I think one of the, we, I think Team Liquid is one of the best at finding that balance of no one feeling shafted. I don't think you can go on, find anyone who's willing to go on record and say they were wronged by Team Liquid. And, um, you know, we, we part ways with players and, you know, they're, they're still happy with how things are handled most of the time and, and all of that. So I think that along with, hey, we're still winning, uh, you know, at least one event every year so far, you know, of, of teams that I'm working with. So uh, I think that that I hope kind of encapsulates what is important in performance to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if I exactly answered your question. Can you can you repeat? Yeah. How, how important do you think performance is compared to kind of the knowledge of the game? Right. So, yeah, yeah. So th- I think that, oh, specific to versus the knowledge of the game. You could talk more generally. Could, yeah. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think that, that, that for me, that it encapsulates why performance is important mm. and what mm. are we willing to do? Um, you know, it, we're not willing to sacrifice any specific person to keep winning. If someone's miserable, you don't want to, you know what I mean? Um, but as far as like, what are, how important to performance, how important is performance versus the in-game or the in-game things that are happening? Uh, probably, uh, this might be a hot take, but I, I don't think it's as important at all. I think that you can, uh, if, if we're talking strictly results and winning, mm. uh, I don't think it's as important at all because you can find a team who eats McDonald's and doesn't sleep well and <laughs> isn't on a good schedule and regiment who wins. You can. I'm not going to lie to you and tell yeah. you you need to have this balanced diet and and you need to only drink water and these things because uh, it's, it's simply not true and I would lose my credibility if I said it otherwise. Mm. However, if you find those teams in 10 to 20 years and you haven't had the conversations with them that they're more than an esports player, you know, if you don't say like, hey, you're going to be a dad or a husband one day or you're going to be a coach to other players mm. um, and we need you healthy, you know, it's not about this moment. It's not about this tournament. It's about who you are as a person and eating good foods and having a, ba- a balanced diet is going to make you better long term. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to elongate your career. It's going to make you feel better while you're here, right? If you're playing and you're mm-hmm. you're playing every day and you're f- you're f- miserable playing, but you're winning that championship and it's that's overcoming all those those shitty feelings. Well, you're not always going to win that championship. And then what? And then how are you going to feel? So um, I think that if, if we do have the conversations of, hey, let's get on uh, a good nutritional you know, diet. Um, let's make sure we're staying hydrated. Let's make sure we're getting proper sleep and rest and recovery. Um, getting you some gym time, some strain in your life outside of just stressors, mental stress. Um, let me show you why it's better. Let me show you why you're going to feel better. And that loss, you know, when you really, really wanted it, it's still going to hit. It's still going to be a bummer, but maybe you'll get back up and chase it again. You know, maybe you won't give up so soon or, or these kind of things. I think that performance uh, answers the questions, uh, gives you a bit more answers for the questions of the future, of things that you wouldn't know unless you did it. You wouldn't yeah. know what it feels like to, to wake up at a decent time and avoid all these sugary drinks and, and those sorts of things. Um, I think that that's kind of the, the best answer. And um, I think we as performance staff need to need to realize that, you know, uh, it sounds great to say, oh, everything needs to be perfect. But, you know, not every um, NFL player or soccer player who's really good has that, you know, 
they, uh, they yeah, don't I, all have this perfect diet. So. I don't think it's perf. It's not possible to be perfect. Like you, right. going back to the point that you said about balance as well, right? You can't. Everyone has flaws that are inescapable, right? That are intrinsic to who you are. There is always going to be some level of balance. Often that balance is, is, is leaning one way that, more than the other, right? I think that anyone that's committed their life to esports is certainly interesting in one way, right? That you've kind of committed right. your life to doing something that's very challenging and, you know, yeah. you have to overcome a lot of hurdles, hurdles to do it. So you're probably a little bit imbalanced intrinsically, Right. But it's about sure. managing that imbalance in the in the right way. And like, like you say, I think knowing where to let things slide and not and understanding right. kind of what, what that what the cost is, I think. Right. Exactly. You made a really interesting point about this. And maybe in some ways, I think this kind of comes back to your business and your brand is, well, does it matter if you're second? If you were second to every single major how 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 is that compared to you know if you win one and then you come sixth right like what's that's a that's a really interesting question did you kind of come to a a kind of conclusion on on an answer to that what's more um, important or maybe specifically to kind of liquids brand values yeah i don't want to speak too much on on team liquid um on their you know values specifically uh i think that like I, like I met, kind of alluded to earlier, I think Team Liquid's got a really good balance uh, mm -hmm. overall of like, hey, we're not going to win if it means having to do something borderline, you know, cheesy, yeah. borderline sketchy. Uh, we're not willing to win if it means, uh, you know, taking advantage of a player or, or abusing their trust or leaving them in a worse mental state, um, which I think there are teams out there who do. And, and yeah. I think that... You know, I'm not here to bash on that either. Um, at the end of the day, a company is a company, and I believe that everyone will, players will decide where they want to play um, based on the legacy that a, a, an organization has created. Mm. And I'm really proud of the, the, the kind of the branding that we've created as far as that goes um, mm. about, you know, just being, be a fucking good person. It's really not that hard. You know? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it costs yeah. nothing to be nice to people, right? It costs yeah. nothing. Look, look after each other, um, do what's right by people and you'll find a, you'll find that you can sleep well at night, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but at the same time, we want to win. We care about winning. Um, and you know, I think we've done a, an amazing job to show that throughout all of our different teams. Mm -hmm. Um, but every team goes through different spurts and, and esports is ever evolving. Um, and so, yeah, there's new teams that pop up and want to, uh, th that can, you know, find their niche or find their way to, to build a roster that's competitive. And um, I think that's kind of the, the fun of being involved in something like this, mm. uh, a new mm. sport, if you will, at the early stages. Uh, yeah. Because you kind of get to learn different metas of esports. Um, but yeah, as far as, uh, I, I don't I don't think it's, you know, my position to say exactly what Team Liquid's goal is with that. I think I kind of hopefully encapsulated um, what what Team Liquid stands for. Uh, but for me, I, I battle with it internally, uh, and I think I can talk talk to that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think if you look at my career in PUBG uh, as as a head coach, I, like I mentioned, we were always there. Everyone knew we were going to compete. Everyone knew we were going to be, you know, um, in in the conversation at the end of a, a tournament. And uh, I I did take pride in that. But fuck, would it would have been nice to win uh, a few more trophies? You know, it would have been nice. And then moving into other games, um, you know, coaching League of Legends and and helping the World of Warcraft team and, and coaching with the Valorant team. Um, you know, I think the, the first time I ever worked with our Valorant team was the LCQ uh, prior to the 2022 World Championship. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the team, to be fair, like, I think any if you ask any of them, they weren't in a great spot. Um, we, we were able to turn it around for that LCQ and qualify for champs. And that was a big win. Um, and, you know get out of get out of the group stage at, at champs in Turkey. Um, unfortunately run into Optic and Fnatic who were both like just <laughs> Yeah, on top and, form at the time. Um, yeah. I gave them a run but it wasn't enough. Um, they were just better teams. And moving on to, to last year too, um, I came in after the first week of, of the VCT season after, you know, lock in had happened and then uh, the team had went one and one on their opening week and uh, I remember there was just so many fires and so many things mm -hmm. going on 
that mm -hmm. first uh, week when I got here. And we were able to turn it around for, for VCT EMEA and, and win that, which, you know, was an awesome day uh, to beat Fnatic when they were just, you know, they'd already uh, beat us, you know, twice and mm. um, everything. Been just to, to be able to pull that off was really fun and it was really a big moment for that year. And I think mm. after that, that was kind of the way that I look at it. I don't think the players saw it exactly the same way, but the way I looked at it was like, that was the cheat, uh, the peak accomplishment, and then yeah, yeah, and then it was like, how do you come back from this? I think they had uh, that we had kind of felt like, okay, we already won what we were, you know, what we were building up for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to fall off after that was was uh, you know really a bummer. I think if you look at how twenty twenty three ended, it was just like, I think we had one series win out of the last five or six series we played um, at those uh, at Masters Tokyo and at champs in LA so um, yeah it was obviously not what we wanted and uh, that was a time where again you look at the season as a whole we still were a good team you know yeah, we weren't yeah. what everyone wanted but uh, I think internally it's something I'm still figuring out is, is what I'm trying to really get to the, uh, as far as the question goes of always being around being that top two you know top five team versus winning and then falling off winning and then falling off uh mm. it's yeah it's it's a it's a mental battle every time it's a really hard question to answer right because i think well especially in valorant right now right i think Fnatic are the undisputed best team in the world re you know realistically right, right um and they've kind of brought a level of consistency that i think that like you know Fnatic has this has had these Fnatic kind of eras in the past as well right where like in, in counter-strike you know they've had times where they have basically winning everything right um right uh, and i'm sure and, and other teams have kind of had similar things in other games i think like e eg had similar a similar kind of series you know in, in in dota they were like the top team in the world for a long time right. og yeah, yeah. as well um so right. kind of like you say they kind of a lot of teams kind of go through these kind of eras and then then they're not so good but then then they come up it's interesting because like you say it kind of it establishes that that identity of the team, right? It's really like an identity of of the kind of organization as a whole, more than just maybe the right. individual team. You start to see them, see them in that way, and I, I think um to kind of circle back to a point that you were saying already, right? Um, it's like why should a player care about it? Because people are going to look up to you, right? If you're going to be at the top of your game, you're going to be a role model for people, right? You're going to people are going to look up to you. And they're going to try and copy your behaviors. They're going to replicate your behaviors. And what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind, right? Does it, does it matter to you, right? Maybe, maybe right. you don't care. Maybe that's not right. your goal, right? Maybe your goal right. is just right. to win above all else, right? And that's what your, that's your personal identity. Right. But yeah. for me, that's not what it's about, right? For me, it's about having the impact on other people and bringing value to them, and helping them have a kind of a, a better life and what what better to do that through than your love of video games right for sure yeah uh, i agree I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up that point though of like it it's not for everyone you know um nba player charles barkley had this famous quote of like i am not a role model right and um it's like i think we need to define that that what is okay or what should be okay is like yeah it's okay to be a dick or like to be off putting kind of individual as long as you're not being a menace to society right there's a difference mm, mm. there's a there's it's okay to be hey i only care about winning um you know uh i'm not here to be someone to look up to but also i'm not going to preach negativity like that's yeah that's the, yeah that's, that's the big boundary of like once you preach negativity or, or your um negative thoughts that's where it's like okay just keep it to yourself right like yeah it's not yeah helping anyone so um I think that's a great point, though. But to me, what I think you're alluding to is self-awareness, which is one of the most important things for me with, with you know, it's a, it's a big topic right now. And it's, it's mm -hmm. very, it's spot on uh, in the last like five years, you know, uh, which I love, uh, because I think it's really showing people what's important. But having that conversation with a player of like, hey, if you want to be that, let's, let's really figure out how you can help the youth. Like, let's mm -hmm. take a mm -hmm. extra day out of your off season. And let's, you know, do a, a youth camp with, with younger players or things like that. Um, 
or you know educational content with your streams or or your yeah. youtube and yeah things like that but other people if it's just about winning it's just about having fun with your friends and showing you know uh, i coached a player within the past couple of years who was very much like i just want to show that i'm better than everyone and that's it and that's i don't care about any of this other shit yeah. i don't care about being a good teammate even i just want to show that i'm better than everyone and it was like okay let's let's find a balance there right like that's your strength that's truly who you are as a person mm. that's powerful stuff like let's not just throw that away that's powerful stuff let's use mm. that mm. Mm. however where can we draw some lines so that the yeah. team is better because the team being better is going to you're going to get it's going to make you better yeah, yeah. you're going you're gonna to be able to play more games and show that you're better you know looking for like hey how can we really show you how this is going to be uh, beneficial to your goal overall yeah yeah and i think that's just it and i think this this kind of circles really nicely to the next question i wanted to ask is kind of what should be the foundation that aspiring professional players should build on i think you kind of said this quite nicely as well well what do you want to achieve right i think a lot of people a lot of people and i i know many many kind of aspiring pro gamers say i want to be a pro gamer i want to be played paid to play video games but actually i think the question is well why why is that you we want that right what is it that intrinsically motivates you and that kind of self-awareness i think that's kind of a really key part of that how would you enable someone to kind of start figuring that out what kind of questions yeah. do you ask yourself yeah so i think that's that's just reverse engineering um which you know other people call it starting with the end in mind um there's many uh, different ways it can be phrased and a lot of wise people have been you know none of this is new like anything that we're learning is most of it's all older things that someone else has figured out before, but we just need to tweak one or two things into mm -hmm. the esports world or the modern world, the internet. Uh, and so I think reverse engineering, starting with what is my finished product, right? When I'm 90 or a hundred or these days with modern medicine over a yeah. hundred, what, what is my, what is going to, how am I going to look back on my life and say, yeah, I did what I want. Like I did what made me happy or I was a good person or whatever that end goal is for you and then work backwards from there, right? Um, does it have to do with family? Does it have to do with being looked up to? Does it have to do with, you know, because maybe esports isn't for you. Maybe you find out that like, oh, I just wanted to esports. I, I thought I wanted to be a professional gamer because I didn't want to work at McDonald's or Costco <laughs> or, you know, I didn't want to work in customer service. Yeah. Um, well, there's other things out there. Have, have you, you know, like there's other things that you could also fall in love with or is it just about notoriety within a community because there's plenty of other ways that you can become you know notable uh in in different communities but this easier and potentially community. more lucrative to you <laughs> true very true uh and so maybe that this is just the first thing that you saw and you fell in love with it right mm. um the same go this is a little tangent but i i spoke with a stranger the other day and um they were just mentioning how Berlin was the first study city that they studied in and how they just instantly fell in love with this, the city. And I was like, well, what other cities have you been to? Oh yeah, nothing. Like I just moved from my home country to here because of, and, and I'm, it, I'm torn because it's two answers in one, right? It's, oh, that's so cool that they found their city that they wanted to be in immediately. But it's also like, well, how do you know you didn't, you wouldn't like something else just as much or mm. more than mm. the city. Uh, so I think that that's also like uh, applies here with, is esports just the thing that you grew up with in your local high school? That was what other th your friends were doing, and that's now what you think you want to do. Or could you fall in love with making movies? Or you know, like, do you need to be the actor, or can you be the director? You know, can you mm. just be the name, or do you need to be the person that is? There's a visual picture alongside of it. Like, these different questions are really what you need to get to the bottom of. Um, but but I think that the the biggest part of that is you can't get to the bottom of that with a player unless you have a rapport first. Unless they yeah. trust you, they know you, mm. they respect you, they believe that you're not just going to tell them what they want to hear or what's best for the organization or any of those things. So uh, it really has to come down to, look, here's why I'm here. So I have to open up first. Here's why I, you know, made these sacrifices or, or, uh, have decided to spend this next year of my career working with you guys is opening up and then explaining, mm. you know, this is why, and this is why I want to help you. 
and I'm here whenever you need it. And if you ever don't need it, you tell me to fuck off. Like I'm a blunt person. If I, if you don't find me helping you, there's no need. You know, I'll I'll fi- I'll help I'll find you in a different way, or I'll help someone else more. I'll give that time to someone else. But it's really just mm-hmm. about letting them know, like, hey, I'm here for your benefit. I'm not here to to you know pull you around or or make things harder for you. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So think, your yeah, your support system, system, right? Yeah. That's the first. That's the first part, and I think maybe this might be a little more helpful to your audience, but um, finding other like-minded individuals, you know, not everyone has, you know, I'm here with, mm. with these guys and they have me whether they want me or not, but not everyone um, who's watching on, on YouTube or Twitch or um, doesn't have someone on hand who they can go to with, with different questions to help learn about themselves. I would say two things that you can do. One, uh, surround yourself, find a community of people who, think how you see the world how you see the world but also want what you want at the end of the day like they're they're working towards the same things that you want um i think that that's very powerful and then and then the second thing i would say is to just surround yourself by positivity surround yourself by like Mm. focus on what you're putting in your ears meaning um whether it's listening to more positive like podcasts or um watching a streamer who you know, at the end of the day, there might be these rage streamers or these streamers who are really funny in content and are, are yelling and screaming and stuff. Um, they might be fun for entertainment, but they're not necessarily helping you grow in any way. And mm. so kind of like defining mm. those two different things and then saying, OK, well, today, you know, I'm only going to spend half my time with my favorite streamer who's entertaining. The other half, I'm going to try and learn from someone um, who is, you know, maybe talking about important values. And, and I'll use Valorant here, but like someone who's talking about truly resetting after a round and you know your teammate makes a mistake or your teammates raging at you and is really just saying hey guys just just mute them move on see what you can do for the next round or Mm -hmm. if you have a player who's you know your jet is just a solo player and and you guys are all talking coordinating how you're gonna uh do a b take and they're over on a or mid or something doing something completely different maybe being like hey this person is playing how they want we can't control how they play Maybe we can play around them. Hey, guys, mm-hmm. Jet's over here. Let's come to them. Like, of course, in real life, you never want to be able to you, – you don't want to kind of, like, follow that person, you know, day after day. But when it comes down to one game or one situation, it's okay to just use the best out of it mm-hmm. if, it's, mm-hmm. if it means you're going to win your game, if it means you're going to climb. Um, you know, you're not, you're not stuck to, to following that person's beliefs or, like, you know, buying into their negative system for more than that one game. You made a really good point. I'm just writing it down. It's about focusing on the kind of content that you that you consume. It, it, it's uh, I've certainly found it to be true that you kind of become what you do, right? The the more you do and, and the, the things that you listen to, you kind of start becoming more more of that person, right? I I never would have thought years ago that I would start doing a podcast, but I've watched lots of podcasts and I was like, well, why not? Why not do one? Because actually, like, I, I believe in the philosophy. I believe in kind of trying to provide this value and, and, and kind of giving that giving that to other people. And maybe I mean, just 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 for some context, I mean, speaking on personal experience, you know, I think I decided quite recently that I didn't want to have a career in esports. And to me, that seemed like, you know, years ago, I would have thought that's insane. Right. And I think even even kind of now at the point that I'm at, it seems kind of crazy because I, I have kind of opportunity to do that. Um, sorry, uh, you cut out for me for a second there. You said uh, you decided and then I completely lost. Sorry, <laughs> that's, that's good timing. Yeah, so recently I kind of decided that I didn't want to have uh, a kind of coaching career in esports because okay. that's kind of what I've been doing for, for all this time. And I've realized that I don't think in the long term it would fulfill me because f- what's motivated me has always been kind of personal growth and personal development. It's like I'm at the top of the ladder then, right? Like if I'm not aiming to run my own esports company, then what what am I aiming at, right? If I know that I'm motivated by growth and ultimately by impact, I think for me, you know, where I can kind of have a positive impact on as many people as possible, then I should set my bar as kind of high as, as high as that works for me. And that's kind of the, the reason I say this is because that's kind of been my personal journey, right, is I got into esports and I was like, oh, you know, I like being an IGL. And then I was like, oh, actually, I like coaching. Oh, you know, I actually really care about people. Right. You know, I never thought, oh, I care about people. Like, oh, no, I really care. Oh, wow. Like making this change to people, that really matters to me. And it's kind of you, 
as you get older, and I think this is maybe an advantage we have over a lot of players, is just you, you start figuring out what you actually love, right? As you kind of grow older and with your life experience, you start really realizing, actually, that's what my, my life's about. And that's really what you have to kind of discover, discover and be self-aware of what are the things that you're actually finding rewarding, right? Because it's often, right. it's more than just the game, right? It was always a social thing for me, right? I loved competing, but the thing that made me buzz was when I had a great team and we brought all that together and everyone was working together, right? And you and you kind of had that kind of, that, that connection that you have with people when you're in a high performance team that you don't really get anywhere else, right? Um, and I think that's the thing, you kind of have to reflect on those things and realize what it is that's really motivating you. Because often, although it's kind of facilitated by the game, it isn't necessarily actually about that. Right. Um, yeah. And this is not to put people off doing gaming as their thing, right? right. This, this podcast is all about gaming, but it's yeah. important to be aware of those things, even in the gaming space, to make sure that you're actually going to be happy in the yeah. long run, because that's what it's all about. Who knows what would have happened without that step for you, without mm. that gaming? Would you have even gotten, would you have even found these specific things out about yourself? You know, you never know. So, um, yeah, gaming is a is an awesome tool um, for those who, who enjoy it and who can use it properly. Um, mm. I think mm. at, the, at, the, at the same time, I think there's very much there's very much truth to things like gaming addiction, you know, and I think that's yeah. something that gamers like to put, uh, you know, the gaming community would like to say, oh, no, 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 no. But like, no, but that's no for you. That's no because you're healthy enough to not mm. let it become that far, that, that take it that far. There's a lot of people who are still chasing their, you know, their moment of glory or their that next rank up or those different things of, yeah, not everyone has the same self-discipline to put it down you know, and walk away and go get done, do the important things that they need to do or, um, or you know, to find a way to, to even provide means or live or find their happiness. There's a mm. lot of those people out there. And I think just because it's not, you doesn't mean and, and i've seen it firsthand that's why i'm comfortable speaking on it is i know that there's people out there who are um still doing that so uh that's just a, a, a side note but um i think that gaming can be used for good and it can also be something that kind of uh, uh catches catches you by storm and, and sucks you know sucks up sucks you up in your daily life uh mm -hmm. and, and and prevent you from being where you really want to be you know, at the end of the day, not every player has what it takes to be pro. And I think there's probably mm -hmm. a lot of players in the, you know, uh, the lower tier teams who just aren't going to make it, but they're going to find that out way too late. So I think it's important to share that message as well of um, like, sure, you can do it. And I, I really believe that anyone can do anything, you know, um, mm -hmm. th those who have been those who have been blessed with the ability to, you know, um, all think uh, at a high level and as long as you know you're not fully disabled I think that you're meant I think that you're kind of more meant to do what you find yourself doing but um, what I'm trying to say is I think that people cut themselves short when you can really do anything in this planet but you don't pick the one that is best suited to you right so um, you have to really know, like, no, I want to be a pro gamer, and I am good enough, and if 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 someone's telling me that I'm not, I'm going to show them wrong, and I'm going to show them wrong now, mm. like, within the next two years, not within the next ten years, you know? So uh, I think that that's, that's also, like, important just for people to find their happiness, so. Mm. I totally agree. So, again, I wanted to kind of, like, touch on a topic that you'd already, you'd already mentioned, and sure. that... A lot of this information exists already, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of the ways that we operate and understanding kind of philosophy and psychology, those things exist already um, from other areas. And right. you mentioned that you'd kind of been in the military. I'd be interested right. to kind of hear about what you think we could kind of learn from the way that the military operates in in oh, kind boy. of the esports space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There really is a lot. Um, but again, it comes down to each individual. And uh, I went through a lot in the military. I went through much less than some others do, uh, to, to just put that point out there. But mm. uh, I think that there's 
a lot of things regarding discipline and teamwork and camaraderie and mm. pushing yourself to a limit that you didn't know you had in you. Yeah. Um, that really can translate into it's not even specifically esports. E it, it it filters into a lot of other categories mm. uh, of human performance as it is, but uh, esports as well of like. Yeah, you didn't you didn't think you could travel to the I mean, I think probably the best example would be like a CS team who's traveling, you know, 200, 200 days out of the year. Yeah. Just for COVID and things like that of like, yeah, you, you can get on that plane and you can find a way to sleep on the plane and, and play uh, in the next event or things like that, um, which is definitely true. But I think that the most important would be the camaraderie of uh, back to actually what you were saying about mm. being in an environment of high performing individuals who have the same goal. You know, that is a seal. That is a seal that you learn how to be a part of that. You learn how to say, look, guys, this is what I'm comfortable bringing. I really know I'm, I'm really fucking good at this X, Y, or Z. But also, I'm not good at A, B, or C, right? And, mm. and I can lean on you for that. And, um, you know, you learn a lot. The, the communication of where I fall short, this is how I need to be picked back up. Or uh, if I'm out of line, this is how I need you to put me back in check. Those mm. are things that you can learn um, that I learned in the military that can translate over uh, to, to how to communicate with, with your team members. Hmm. I think there's there's a lot. I mean, it's, it's something I've been reading about kind of more recently because, of course, military strategy actually can can fall pretty neatly into right. the ways that yeah. we can actually operate in game. The systems um, yeah. and kind of protocols that we put in place in game actually a lot of this has been done and it's been done really well because the risk right. is much higher when someone's actually shooting at you. Right. Um, so it's it's a kind of interesting in, in, in that way. Okay, so you've talked a lot about kind of, I think, kind of self-awareness and the things that people should be kind of building. I guess in, in your experience, kind of what, are the, what are the kind of most common things that you see people dealing with maybe when they're kind of early on in their career and uh, kind of skills that you think they should really be trying to, trying to hone as early as possible? Sorry, you cut out one more time. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, so w one of the things that you'd mentioned was that um, we we've talked a lot about kind of general issues that people can have and how important self-awareness is. What are maybe some of the kind of most common issues that you've seen in players when they're kind of early on in their career? And you think they're kind of skills that people should really be trying to, yeah. trying to learn? Right, so uh, I think one of the main ones is... Uh, younger players coming in thinking they know it all uh thinking just you know because i'm the leaderboard shows me that i'm a top 10 player and i can compete with these guys that i know what it's about um mm. when you don't actually know what it's about because those other nine players that are on pro teams that you are comparing yourself to they're doing it with less hours in a day because they have to do all of their other obligations for mm. their org or for uh you know all these other things so I think that's that's one thing is um, think coming in thinking they know it all, uh, not knowing how to take feedback would be a second one of mm. like, hey, just because I'm critiquing you on something or talking to you about how you could do something better doesn't mean I'm mad at you or that you did something bad or wrong. Or um, I think mm. the younger players are naturally, and and I uh, I think a. Uh, I guess it, it, it is in all types of games. I was going to say a specific uh, kind of genre of game, but uh, where you, you, hey, I'm just giving you feedback because this is how it works and this is how we can be better and this mm. is being a team is uh, where they might see it as, oh, I'm being scolded or I'm being told that I did, told off or I did something wrong and it's, it's just not the case. Um, so I think those are some things. And then, and then in addition to that, I think, I think players can really work on uh, learning how to get themselves into a proper focus based on their routines. I think getting a, a routine that's healthy for you um, is where you can really see improvement. Mm. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of specifics there, I guess. But like just having a notebook um, or, 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 you know, physical, I'm a little bit older. So for me, it's a physical notebook, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's a physical notebook for other for the younger players, they might have, you know, their notepad open on their on their screen, on their second monitor or things like that. Um, but I think that writing things down as you're in game, OK, like you don't have a coach right now. You're not a professional. You don't have a coach. You're trying to get to that level. 
Okay, I'm going to write down when it was, you know, pistol round, second half, uh, this specific thing happened. I want to go back and look at it either mm -hmm. after this game or if you're a streamer and you have, you know, some following or after this stream, whatever. But, like, coming down with that routine, um, doing something that you like that's comfortable for you before your day starts, whether it's, like, okay, I shower, I eat, and I do five minutes of stretching before I play. Uh, I think that this can really go a long ways towards two things. One, getting you kind of in that flow state or getting you in your routine uh, quicker. Uh, but two, it can also build discipline of like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to play. Because, I, 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 guys, I was, I was, I wa just want to wake up and you just want to freaking play, right? I get it. I know. But if you could build this discipline, it's the same thing um, in between splits or in between seasons different tournaments i would force my teams you have to take a week off you cannot yeah. touch PUBG for one week you cannot touch valorant one week whatever and it makes you want to play the game again it makes you like hungry mm. it, it builds this thing back inside you mm. so i think that the same way when you wake up in the morning and you're like no i cannot play i'm not going to join ranked until i go through my bots you know uh, you know I, I do my stuff for my physical self first and then okay how am i going to perform at a high level in this game I'm going to do my three death matches. I'm going to do my aim training, whatever. And it, it really, that building that discipline to do that before you get into that first ranked match, um, I think is also something that, that can really um, be beneficial, especially if you want a career long-term in esports. Mm. It's funny, you mentioned about um, like habits like that. So Kiko, the duelist player on, on your team, who you probably know, yeah. Giorgio, who you probably know quite well now, uh, one of the things that he said when, when we had a, co a conversation on this podcast was about he when he was kind of first getting into Valorant, he reviews ev every death. Every single death. He, 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 he pressed the record button, and every time he died, he would go back and watch that death just to try and analyze his kind of mechanical errors that he did. Yeah. And, and he did that like regardless. And he was like, yeah, and I was radiant in a week. And I was like, well, that just, if you did that, you would be a much, like anyone could do that, right? Feasibly, anyone could review every single death and try and understand what's going wrong. I tell you, if, if you if you did anyone, you try this for a week and you see how much improvement you make, right? You'll just be so much more self-aware. Right, right. It comes back to that self-awareness of it, actually, right? Because you don't even realize the mistake that you're making. Yeah, and I think what, what I would uh, say in addition to that is, when doing that review, he's obviously an example of where that works, but you also yeah. have to know the right answer. It, if you're just reviewing and you don't actually know what you should have been doing differently or what, you know, if you don't add, then there is a bit of an issue of like, yes. you know, wasting your time or, or something like that. But yeah, if, and, and to somebody who would might want to try that, which I think is a great suggestion, finding someone who, who is a higher rated mm. player than you or something of like, hey, can I show you a couple of clips? You know, I, that I just kind of thought, how great would that be if we lived in a gaming community where instead of flaming each other, we asked each other, "Hey, can you mm. review a couple rounds of my clips after this game?" Like, "Hey, let's pop in a Discord." You know, uh, how great would that be if we could just live in a community of like helping each other and and finding that player? Like, "Hey, I think you're better than me. I think you're better than me, and I'd like for you to, if you would mind, give me 20 minutes of your time, and show me what you think of this." And I'd if, if you care about my opinion, I'll do the same for you. But I think it's funny because I've only ever had, I think, one moment um, where this was back in PUBG. Uh, I lost a game to a guy. I'll never forget his name. His name's I Am Drake. I Am Drakey was his name. And uh, I know he still follows me and, and shouts me out every while. Once in a while, he writes me on Twitter or whatever. What's up? Shout out to you. Uh, but we were in the final circle and he beat me. And I added him afterwards. I added him in the game, and I was just like, "Hey, I think you're really sick. You want a duo?" And it started this great friendship. Yeah. And I think that those moments where you're just genuine, and and of course, I could have been a salty loser, and I could have just been like, "Oh, you had high ground, peakers advantage, blah blah blah, whatever." Yeah, I could yeah. have done that, but I was just like, "No, this guy was sick. He beat me fair and square, and and we create we started playing duos, and we and it's actually actually now that I think about it, that was the first pro team I ever played. Like we weren't pro, but that's the first." team i ever put together was with him and his friends and that's what started my pubg career oh so. i feel i feel you on that on pub i you probably know who i'm gonna refer to now most of the, obviously most of my followers are valorant followers but i did the same thing with fuzzface from phase okay. 
in PUBG mm-hmm. when I was when I was kind of playing PUBG, and, and we yeah. did the same thing, and we duoed we duoed all the time, and I was like, I learned so much from this guy. I learned so much from that guy. That was, I mean, PUBG, PUBG was probably the only game that I've ever really been good at. So, like, really been good at. So, oh, okay. yeah, I mean, I know a lot of the... I didn't like, know you I'm, had a background in PUBG. That's awesome. A brief, brief one. I mean, so when it was kind of like in beta, I, I, I played a lot and I was like in the kind of European kind of servers where everyone was kind of top 100, right? So, yeah, so I was in a server with people like I, I, Ibiza, right? Someone, Ibi is probably someone you know really well, unsurprisingly. And I've kind of like followed followed since that they're people that i didn't really stay in contact with but yeah i mean i have PUBG has a has definitely has a place in my heart too because it's about the people right the people and, they're, and they're a special, great community special, of people special in the beginning for sure and also how small that community is right like as i realize we probably have a lot of mutual connections because esports is is tiny yeah yeah it's sure. uh it's crazy actually how how yeah. kind of small the scene is um, yeah, but I, you, I think you do, you do go through these segments of like, for me, my, my career was, or my gaming was, you know, just internal and uh, before Xbox Live and before all of those things, and then, <laughs> you know, there's the Halo community that I know very well. Yeah. And then there's you know, the World of Warcraft people that I met and like, there's that era. And then there's, you know, the League of Legends. There's just there's the different eras of these games that are so cool. And it's like that PUBG era will always be so special. And and then mm. also not to not to forget that. I'm living in the Valorant era now, mm, and it's very mm. cool and it's very special. And um, there's going to be a, a whole new list of memories that are made. So mm, I, f- I feel you on that one. I think we touched a really interesting point, and you could probably speak on this too. Is, I mean, how, how often does someone d- message you and ask for performance advice? Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit more closed off. I think uh, I get messages quite often, but um, I-, I guess... I say quite often it's it's actually asking for advice is very okay I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how it works when i get a message if i get a hey or a hey tanner or a hey 17 or whatever it's instantly ignored right? yeah if i don't know you however if you give the time to give two sentences about why you're reaching out to me i will always respond i will always you know give my opinion or, or try and help you or give you the time of day uh it's just kind of this thing of like I don't want to have, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to ask you mm-hmm. what you are. Totally valid. You're a busy guy, right? I'm, I can relate. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would say the second, the actual in detail of like, hey, I had this question for you or hey, I saw you on, on the podcast and uh, I have this question for you. It doesn't happen very often. So, And I think this is an important point, right? I think recently I've had one person, maybe I maybe say it happens like once or once a week, maybe every other week, someone, you know, I mean, I'm not that well known, right? But right. like, you just think people, I mean, this is a really important piece of advice is that you need to start reaching out for help. If I had done this, if I started reaching out for help six years ago, when I was like, you know, I could have still been a player. I maybe didn't, wouldn't have become a coach, you know, because I would have got over specific hurdles that I had in kind of my playing career. That, that I just I kind of never found the solution to all the, to them and I never really took the effort actually to kind of go out and seek out those solutions so I was like well I could be a coach and then well then you obviously then you end up learning a load of other stuff but it's right. just kind of the way I guess kind of the way that my path has gone is like that but I realized it could have been very different if I just asked for some help yeah yeah ask for help <laughs> So Just don't yeah. go straight to the top for help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you be messaging Nets and 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 you know Kiko for for help, find <laughs> find someone in middle ground, work your way up there, and then. Uh... But like, if you're like a tier two player, like a top a top tier two player that wants to make that transition, which I think right. is a lot a lot of my audience is are those people, okay. right? That are like yeah. kind of one step away from kind of being tier tier one. Maybe you do need to reach out to to those people that are kind of yeah. that that one yeah. that one step ahead of you. Like you say, it's about being reasonable with it right because someone with yeah. two million followers on twitter probably isn't likely to reply to you but at the same right. time what does it matter what have you got to lose by sending a message true. true true just make sure it's a good message again don't don't just hit them with the hey tens it's not gonna go very good <laughs> it's not gonna work it's not gonna work so i actually wanted to ask you a question do you work with coaches as well do you give performance coaching to your coaches yes yes i do how this is something i think that's become quite evident to me and quite important is how, how important do you think actually the performance coaching is for for leaders 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's important for anyone anyone who's not doing it on them on their own, and I think even those who are doing it on their own, and by it I mean like creating your habits and and following them, sticking to them. Um, I think those are the people who are asking for, hey, like, let me get your opinion on this as well. Mm-hmm. Like that you're saying, like, hey, uh, I, you're not afraid to say, hold me accountable here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I think leadership is very important. Um, I am constantly filling my brain with the questions that I have from external sources, right? Whether it's podcasts or books or, um, you know, different sources of inspiration and leadership. I'm trying to always do that so that I know what, okay, I'm going to distribute that to someone else i might have the answer to the question that you're going to have and that's something that i did not do for years up until the past couple years i wanted it to all be from me and i'm really glad i did it that way because i wanted it to be i wanted to have my baseline and know that i was talking out of experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now i feel like i have a good enough base uh you know uh, foundation where i can really look for those other people and and also disseminate what i think is my reality versus what isn't you know there's plenty of great probably uh you know pop podcasts or performance or books or things like that that i don't align with you know they mm-hmm. might they might still be based in some truth for someone um, but it's not exactly how i want to um disseminate my information but that's mm-hmm. not necessarily doesn't mean i wouldn't say to someone else hey you should check out this person that i they seem to be more aligned with how you feel or how you think Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, um, I can speak specifically to the working relationship with Emil right now is, um, very much on us collaborating to make sure we know, uh, what are my duties versus what is his duties, right? Which is like where the best example, um, to go into would be in game things. If I see something in game, what things can I ask, can I say to him or would he like me to avoid? So on the much more tactical side, that's not my area of expertise. I'm not going to be giving that much. But if I see a player um, maybe complaining about a death or complaining about how they, um, you know, how they died, instead of immediately giving the call out mm-hmm. of why they like what they died to, to here, this is this player or whatever, like they're going a whatever, and you're wasting that time. That's not helping us be a better team. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, 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 help us with that. Help us with that. If you see that, talk about that. If you see you know, um, something else, that's not where I'm, that's not what I'm here to do. So, mm-hmm. uh, finding that balance and, and knowing when can I, you know, um, have my moment to share what I want to share with the guys setting aside that time. And, and sometimes it's like, Hey, we might have to sacrifice a scrim a week or something. If, you know, for example, we want, um, the players to be physically fit. So it's like, Hey, we're going to have to mm-hmm. sacrifice one day, one scrim a week, where we're going to be going and um, getting our, our health is improving, right? Which mm. we all are in agreement, the staff, that if the players are healthier, then we're going to have less illness. We're going to have more productive scrims long term, all those things. So we have mm. our, our formula. There is no formula, but there is our formula. And that we agree this is how we want to yeah. build this. Yeah, I think it's so important, like you say, because no team's the same, right? And no people are the same. We're not gonna not no one no one's gonna run the team exactly the same as anyone else, right? Because play to your strengths and and, and avoid your weaknesses, right? Yeah. So speaking on the on the new team, what were kind of the first things that you did, right? Like you know you've had a big big shuffle in the team and you've brought in brought in new people, some of whom know each other very well and others others not so much. Yeah. What were kind of the first things that you do to kind of start building the kind of I guess the the, the culture? That, that you want to see moving forwards yeah so uh the first thing that we did when we got this new roster we had a boot camp together and uh i think it was between i want to say it was a short one like five to eight days or something um and i had some icebreakers i wanted planned it was much less about performance and and scrims or anything like that and much more about like getting to know each other and this this uh specific scenario we have of, of a member of, or three 
players and, from Apex last year, and then two of our players from last year and a coach and some staff. It's really become about merging two different programs, you know, two mm. different things teams uh, which is not always the case right and so um i'll give you an example i I had a few different activities lined up but one of the main activities was gave the boys 20 questions um and they had to interview each other we broke off into twos obviously one apex player one liquid person um so that they don't already know the question answers the questions um asking these 20 questions that are real conversation starters giving them the time to laugh and talk and tell stories to each other and then they had to introduce their partner in front of everyone. So then they have to say, read through the list of this is, you know, this is Yampi and he's from Finland and he's this and this and this, you know, yeah. um, and and these sorts of things was uh, one of the first icebreakers that we did. Um, there was a, a lot more of like early mornings and, and getting up and uh, watching the sunrise and talking about different things together. But each one is kind of tailored towards uh, what we want to be the framework of this team and what we want to be again that foundation uh and then traveling to to korea was kind of like we had a we had a second boot camp before our korea tournament before avl which was okay we're going to focus a lot more on the in-game stuff um we know that we have a, quite a while till um till bct starts and things are going to change and all that so let's just focus on in-game basics and uh, see, you know, where we're going to be at for, for Korea. And then Korea itself was like setting expectations. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what you can expect for this next year. Okay. Um, there's gonna, you know, we're not going to have mandatory bedtimes, uh, or mandatory wake times, but there are going to be recommended wake times. And then the team said, each player on their own said, we want, if it's going this was pre-Korea travel. If it's going towards the tournament or whatever, we want set times of like wake. Like we want, if you're saying this will make us better, and this is very detailed in getting into uh, light exposure and, and things like that of mm -hmm. why we have these times. But they were like, if you're saying that this will make me better, if I'm up looking at the sun at this time, then I want to do it. Right. Yeah. And so that was kind of like, okay, you, we can do this, but you guys need to know that you're signing, you know, signing away. Like <laughs> I signed up for this shit. I don't care if it's gonna suck, I'm gonna do it. And uh, so that was when I, with this team, I was like, okay, we have a coachable team. Um, we don't have anyone who's, uh, you know, about me, me, me. Mm. It's all about us, us, us. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that was the first kind of like, okay, we're, Korea was about setting, uh, setting the standard and, and saying, okay, we're gonna uphold ourselves to this and grow from here. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of the first thing. And then, you know, everyone has winter holiday and um, and things like that. And especially for me, it was a little elongated because I was getting ready for the move, leaving, you know, getting rid of an apartment in, in L.A. and moving everything, my life from there to here. And uh, so now that we were here, it was like, OK, we still have some issues. We still have uh, like lost baggages and, and things like that that we're trying to fight through. Uh, yeah. But it's like we're looking at each other in, in our in each other's eyes. We know where we're sleeping at night every night. Like we have our, our own space and all of the logistics are now set up. We can, you know, make a couple things better, but now is when season starts. Season really is going to kick off for us, you know, with this week's of practice. Uh, everyone knows what to expect. So, mm. yeah, we're, it's, it's exciting times around here because we're just right at the beginning of like everyone knows like, okay, this is what we, we can. We finally have some normal, normalcy. We can adjust to this yeah create our yeah. own routines that yeah yeah i'm so I'm, I'm so excited i guess as a team i realize there's a lot of kind of high performance individuals on the team and and i think that you have from my point of view a culture that really can bring you know incredible levels of success have you kind of set an expectation for the season or is it something you avoid to do to not um, put too much pressure on yeah, I mean, I think every team is different. This team, to me, seems like a team that doesn't, um, you don't need to set expectations other than we're going to continuously get better. Just give our best. We also don't know where we're at right now, right? That's the fun of a new season is like everyone thinks Fnatic's still going to be the best team. <laughs> like we think, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah. Been a very, very long off season. 
Right. We don't know why they wouldn't be, but but that's the fun thing about life is some one little thing happens somewhere that you know no one knows about, and it just kind of has the butterfly effect, or mm. you know teams fall off at times. You know, um, little things such as like uh, a new personal relationship in someone's life can really take on a drastic um, change within mm. a team, mm. right? Or mm. uh, player feels like they accomplished what they wanted to the last year. And then now they're like, oh, fuck, it does feel really good to just sit in bed and watch Netflix. I don't really want to get up for that extra game or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't really want to come in any early anymore. Like that, that those are just the realities of life. So yeah, uh, I think we don't know where we're going to sit and you don't want to make too much adjustments in the beginning of a season before you know, you know, where you're at. Mm. Um, so I think it's kind of like finding out where you're at and, and saying like, okay, what is holding us back from being the best? Or if we are the best, okay, how do we maintain that? Um, is, is the, the tricky part. So it's, yeah, I, I would say, um, I don't know what the team's expectations are. We have kind of like talked about it and it was the conversation that I just had with you, which is we need to see where everyone's at, um, but the reality is, is it's going to be a long season. I know there's a lot of talk on on the the format and how many games are being played and things like that. But it's yeah, enough. if you make mistakes early on, you can overcome them. Mm. Um, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. I w- I want to thank you so much again for your time, Tanner, because I know how I know how busy esports schedules are. So I want to thank you so much for your time. And if there's anyone you want to shout out, or I guess any parting advice that you would kind of like to give for for people that really want to kind of take on this challenge of becoming a professional esports player, then I'd love to hear it. Yeah. I mean, I would say um, it, it comes down to self-awareness, uh, learning about yourself. So if your goal is to become a professional player, you need to dig deep, gather the people that are closest to you who understand gaming and ask them what you're good at, what you suck at, Go really deep into the things that you're good at. Make them where you're the best at that at those things. Uh, and then the things that you suck at, decide whether you need to get better at them or not. Because there are some things that you can suck at that you do not need to get better at. And it, to, to waste your time on that is just not you know, helpful. Um, if your goal is, for example, to be the best player in the game, and someone says, oh, you need to be more comfortable on camera and giving interviews, it's not true. Like You can say, I'm not an interviewer, you can, as long as you can go up there, stand, get interviewed, yes, no. I would recommend you never interview me again because I don't care about this stuff. <laughs> Boom, straight to, like, I'm here to play and win, period. Um, that's an example. But yeah, really yeah. make that list, the people who are closest to you, ask them, what am I good at, your coaches or your teammates. Obviously, if you're not even at that stage yet where you don't have a team, find a team. Humble yourself if you need to. Play Premier with people that you think you're better than. Show that so that you can have that, you know, the stats of, hey, I'm really good mechanically and I deserve to be playing with a higher Premier team, whatever. So those are some some quick pieces of advice. But also, like you and I both spoke about, feel free to ask for help. Um, mm. if, if anything that I've said here resonates with you, uh, a viewer watching, uh, I'm able to reach out. I would love to to give you a piece of advice or two um, and and go from there. Something more specific to your situation and not just, uh, you know, uh, general advice. Yeah. But also, thank you so much for the time. Uh, thank you for the invite. Uh, I enjoy doing things like this. You're a great host and uh, you have a lot of the messages that I value. You also value. Um, so that was cool to see. You know, this is our first time meeting, but uh, I felt like mm. I had a, a friend that I've known for a while, and maybe it's the PUBG, uh, yeah, PUBG <laughs> uh, mix up, uh, mash up. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tana. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.